Friend, don't bother me at all, Mr. Friend. It is. Thank you. It looks good right there. No one blow on me. I can take the breathing. Hallelujah on us. Make sure about this time the Lord will come. You've been freezing all year round. H and B going to be here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts 2, 42. They continued steadfastly in the apostles. I like that. The apostles. Doctrine. And fellowship. And in breaking of bread. In prayer. Let's bow our heads and pray to God. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Lord, we thank you right now for this gathering here today. Hallelujah. One shall put a thousand to flight yes. and two ten thousand. And I believe God that's talking about us. The magnetism and the influence he gave this church. Thank you, Jesus. We are here on assignment. We're here for a purpose. We are ambassadors for heaven. Yes, amen. We grant visa to go there. Yes. We are going to have a great service tonight. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Yes. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Now I want to tell you tonight, this church is fully apostolic. Amen. When I say our church is apostolic, I mean by that we continue in the apostles' doctrine. doctrine. Amen. We are going to continue to death. Yes, amen. Amen. I said we shall continue until death. Yes, amen, amen. In the apostles' doctrine. doctrine yes. Steadfastly. Yes, amen. And in fellowship, fellowship and in breaking of bread and in words. Yes, amen. There are three words that summarize the book of Acts of the Apostles. In fact, I call it Acts of the Apostles and Acts of the Holy Ghost. Because very prominent, we see the Holy Spirit in operation, chapter after chapter. And in every place, in working with the apostles. They are dominant throughout the book of Acts. And there are three words that summarize Acts chapter 1 to the last chapter in that book. Prayer, witnessing, and giving. Amen. And if anybody asks you what church you belong to, you tell them, I say, you belong to an apostolic church. Yes, amen, amen. And so what does that mean? We are continuing, and we are the continuation yes. of the apostles of Christ's doctrine yes. and amen. teaching. Amen. Doctrine means teaching. Yes. Everything we do, every practice we have, every way that we behave ourselves, it is apostolic. And we can show in the book of Acts that it was modeled for us. And we are the continuation of it. And those three words is what we are going to build this church around. Praying, witnessing, and giving. Amen. That's Amen. the mission of our church. Amen. Let's say it again. Praying. Yes. Say it with me. Praying. Praying. Witnessing. Witnessing. witnessing and giving. And giving. That is the acts of the apostles. Acts of them praying. Acts of them witnessing. Acts of them giving. Yes. Amen. In chapter you read those three things appear. Acts of them giving, praying, witnessing. Yes. And so our church, our vision, our mission is. To continue in the apostles' doctrine. Amen. Amen. When you say apostolic, it means you are Pentecostal. Yes. Right. In belief. Yes. Amen. Pentecostal Amen. means you are continuing Acts chapter 2. Yes. Amen. It means that you have been baptized. Yes.
Yes. In the name of that one true living God, yes. Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. And by full immersion, that's apostolic. Number two, you didn't repent first. Then you got baptized, Amen. and then you got the Holy Ghost yes, yes. speaking with other tongues, mm -hmm. as every true apostolic Pentecostal does. Right. It's in the Book of Acts. Now, the first one I'm going to talk to you about: apostolic praying. Praying. We come every Tuesday. We pray from 7:30 on. By 8:30, we're done. Or by nine, as the case might be, <coughs> time is irrelevant when you're praying. That's right. But we must pray. Yes. And we must pray for results. Yes, amen. amen. Jesus, our fearless leader, told us how not to pray. He said, when you pray, be not like the hypocrites or like the vain repetitious speaker mm -hmm. or much speaker. He said, you will not be heard for that. But he said, but when you pray, and he gave us how to pray. That's right, amen. So, if you're apostolic, and you belong to the Pentecostal doctrine, you're going to want to know what Jesus had to say. Now, people wonder, how should we pray? In the world, some kind of beads. Yes. Hello, some yes. chant. Yes. And there are many fashions out there. I'm not here talking about them today. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about pray for results. When you pray, there should be prayer power. Yes, amen, amen. amen. Power is from on high. Yes, amen. And when we pray, we pray for different reasons. The first reason why we pray is the Bible command that men must pray always. Yes, amen. And not faint. Pray without ceasing. That means we always should be in prayer. Yes. Now, we also have examples of successful prayer. We can turn to Cornelius' life in the book of Acts 10. And here's a man that prayed always. Right. Amen. The Bible says he prayed always. And we see the power of his prayer. God responded yes, amen. to proper prayer. Yes. And then we can see another man pray without ceasing. His name is Elijah. Elijah, Mount Carmel, prayed, and the Bible says in prayer impacted heaven. It closed heaven's door and opened windows in heaven. When he prayed, and these are models that we look to for praying. <coughs> there, there are types of prayer. When they prayed, the apostles and the men of God and the apostolics, when they prayed, they prayed three kind of prayer. Intercessory prayer. Number two, they prayed supplication prayer. Then they prayed giving of thanks. When you come through that door to pray on a Tuesday night or any time at all, you should have those three prayer modes in mind. Yes. I come to pray not to chant, mm -hmm. not to groan, right. not to do anything else. I come to pray intercessory prayer. Amen. I come to pray Amen. with supplication. Yes. I come to pray with giving of thanks. Hallelujah. Now, what is intercession? Intercession means when you come to God, you come to appeal to God for others. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus wept over a city. And they prayed for others to receive their sight. So when you come to pray, you pray at the Syrophoenician woman. She came and she prayed for her vexed child. And God responded to that prayer. Yes, now, natural tendency when you come, you want to pray about your own personal problems. Your own personal needs. Now, that's not the way to pray. Amen. When you don't know how to pray, that's how you do it. But when you know how to pray, you come first with intercessory prayer. Praying for others. That's mm -hmm. intercessory prayer. And when you finish praying intercessory prayer, the next level of prayer at that same prayer session is you go into supplication prayer. 
in that it means you're making personal need request mm -hmm. to God. And when you make the request to God, amen, it will happen. Give an example. Jabez prayed a prayer. It was a personal prayer. And we know his supplication was he didn't want certain things to happen in his life. And everything he was asking God for, it must have meant the will of God because God responded to it in the affirmative. Another prayer we see is the giving of thanks. Once you pray in the prayer and you make your supplication prayer, then you go into the giving of thanks. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't leave that prayer upset with God. You leave that prayer giving of thanks, of gratitude. You say, well, I don't know how to pray. Well, if you don't know how to pray, then let me invite you to go look at examples in the Psalms. <coughs> All the Psalms are about praying. We learn in the Psalms, three things we learn when looking at the Psalms, are we look at the role model God gave us, because the Bible is a book of models to follow, or not to follow. When we look at how to pray and what to pray for, you say, well, I don't know what to pray. Well then, number one, pray the promises of God. Yes, amen. God made promises. Yes. It's your job to repeat them back to Him. Yes, amen. Remind by those promises. Not that God forget, but you're praying the promises of God. Mm -hmm. Lord he said, they that go so in tears shall reap with joy. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray that kind of prayer. Mm -hmm. Those prayers does not depress me. It inspires me. Mm -hmm. It gives me a feeling of hope. <coughs> Next, when you pray, you praise God for what he's done. Mm -hmm. You praise him for what he's done in your life. And then you end it by worship him for who God is. Now, if I'm going to come to God, the first thing I'm going to do, if I'm going to pray on Tuesday tonight, the first thing I do is praise God. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. For what he's done. I don't care what your present needs are. You have a long historical history yes. of needs he's met. Amen. You better talk about it. Yes, right. amen. Before you mention any present need, you better look back in history and call the memorials of things God did. Yes, amen. And that's why you enter in his presence with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yes, amen. You better do that. Yes. Otherwise, you're looking at his attention. Yes. Mm -hmm. One thing you never do with a king, you'll never turn your back to a king, and you never come with a sad countenance. Mm -hmm. Even if you're sad, you can't do it. Amen. Now, when you praise God, you pray him for what he has done yes. in your life or other people's life. Mm -hmm. That is like sweet incense to God. Yes. That's a door opener to the Amen. mind and the heart of God. Amen. And then you pray the promises of God. Yes. Amen. I come based on the promises of God. Amen. I come and reiterate the promises. Not that God forget, but God the covenant keeper. That's right. And you remind God of his promises. And when you do that, then you slip in there your, your needs. God, you did say you supplied all my needs. Mm -hmm. You did say that. And you did say all these things to me. Now, he said, now, what come next? Once you come, you do that. The next thing you do, you leave that place of prayer, worshiping God. Yes, amen. Amen. I worship you because of who you are. Yes. Amen. You are my God, mm -hmm. my Savior, my Creator. My deliverer, I worship you, God. Now, I, I bless the Lord because he meet all my needs. Yes, amen. I bless the Lord because he has given me victory and power amen. and supplies my need yes. and protect my investment. And he has anointed me. They give God the glory for it. You must spend more time exalting God. Yes. Because we're not beggars. Right. That's right. I'm a child of God. Yes, amen. I belong to him. Mm -hmm. Do you know any kids that beg their daddy or their mommy for stuff? Mm -hmm. No. The father knows what you have need of. Right. 
and he will give it to you. Now, my dad was like that. He, he would want to give more than he had in his pocket. <laughs> but to me, the most important thing was the desire, is, is desire to do it. Well, he's able to do it because he had it in his heart. All right? He said, well, Pastor, what should I ask for if we pray? How should I ask God? How should I approach God in prayer that my prayer would be wonderfully received? Number one, know how to ask. Right. Not many people know how to ask. Mm -hmm. I watched puppies in the days of my youth. When my grandma used to love dogs and she raised puppies and all that stuff. And there's always one puppy that could never get to the breast. When it comes, the dog goes, rrr, rrr, and growls at him. His approach was so indignant repugnant. And, and he would come and grab that breast and just pull and the mom would just despise him. Sometimes in, in, in the animal world, the cows do that to them. Despise their young for, for their approach that they have towards the mother. And they disown them. And, and it's a very sad situation when it happens. But knowing how to ask. The Lord tells us how to ask in prayer. When you come to God, you don't come demanding God does his thing. Mm -hmm. God's not your boy. That's right. He's not your servant. Right. He's God. That's right. And you don't ever forget that. Mm -hmm. Who are you talking to? You're talking to God. Yes. And when you come, he told you and me, very plainly, you must come and ask in faith. Amen. He said if you don't ask in faith, like Jabez did, and if you start doubting like James said you shouldn't, and you start wavering, God says, you receive nothing. Now, are you going to argue with God? That's your problem. God gave you the criteria for asking. So when you come, you don't feel that God is. He's there. Number two, that God is the rewarder of those that seek him and don't give up. Right, amen. But without faith, you cannot please God. And parents, if you don't get pleased, you're not going to grant the kid nothing. Right. So nothing doubting, come in faith. The lepers did not doubt. They said, Lord, have mercy on us, and the Lord healed them. They did not doubt it. All right? Knowing that we have been heard, God is not dead. Right. Silence does not mean God is ignorant of your presence. He filled the universe. And if you don't know how to approach God, then open your prayer to the Lord. Help me to pray according to thy will. One guy told God, help my unbelief that I may pray right. So you may answer me. So knowing how to ask God in faith. Nothing doubting, nothing wavering. When you pray, you're not praying to Baal who don't want to pray. Right. You pray to God and answer prayer. Yes, amen. And God demands we all come to Him to ask. Now, uh, when you approach God, we come with what? Faith. Amen. I come boldly to God. I come with confidence. I don't come as if God's gonna hit with a stick mm -hmm. for a mistake. Mm -hmm. I come trusting God. I come in faith. I come with confidence. I come with boldness. I don't question God. Now, successful prayer always please God. Number two, successful prayer is always based on faith of the one who's praying. Mm -hmm. Successful prayer, the person who believes that they're heard. Yeah. And also, number four, believe they're asking according to his will. Amen. The best as I know it. Yes. I'm asking God according to his will. All right? If I was to ask God, God, when he come a second time? Give me the date. That's stupid prayer. Yeah. <laughs> that is so stupid, there was no answer. That's right. Everybody <laughs> told you. It's not for you to know. That's right. Right? Yes. Now, but when I come in confidence and without any odd because of my brother or my sister, and I come with boldness. I can't pray for God to kill my wife. He's not going to do that. That's right. <laughs> He's not my executioner. <laughs> Hello. I can't give God a, a message to go shoot somebody down. He's not Al Capone. <laughs> He's 
He's no mercy killer. Amen. But I come boldly to God, and I come trusting God that God will supply my needs. Now, when I pray for need, I pray for God to either bless me, meet my needs, give me victory over my sins, or supply needs, or ask God, amen, for anointing, and the list could go on and on and on and on. Now, some folks, when God answered the need, they forgot to return and give thanks. And so, they jumped to another need. Another need. And God said, just a minute. What about you talking about the first one? Mm -hmm. Somebody wrote to me an email that said, this is our broadcast responding to a formula I gave. I don't know if anybody's in this church, blessed as that old side of was, but they heard stepping on supernatural. So they went to the all the things I said on the tape and carried out all the, the commands. And now I wrote back to him and said, Pastor, thank you for the program. That's why I believe you guys should always get those messages out. Somebody else is going to get it. Mm -hmm. So thank you for doing this. Everything that I did worked. Amen. Amen. Everything Amen. worked in my favor. God. With the bank, the mortgage, my boss, and everything else. Yes. Yes. I take no credit. What it is, is following the steps. Amen. Two men be an altar, Cain and Abel. And God had respect to one altar and not the other. Both had good desires, but their approaches were wrong mm -hmm. with Cain. And the approach with Abel was right. Mm -hmm. And God showed his approval. And God showed disapproval, and Cain understood disapproval. Well, he chose not to change. But when God said nothing doubting, Ask, mean ask, and it shall be given. That's the promise. Yes. That's how I pray. You God, you said ask, and it shall be given. God, you said seek, and I shall find. God, you said not, and it shall be opened. So I'm going to try. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try my faith. And God, if I have unbelief, help thou my unbelief. Yes, amen. I'm amen. going to appeal to God. Now, some people are approaching God, like Mary and Martha. Here's a need to have their brother sick. And they called Jesus and didn't show up. God says he delayed. He delivered the delay. Look at it. He delivered the delay. But he was also busy because on his way, he was healing people with the issue of blood and, and demonic people on the way. So it's not that God's handicap or God's powerless. You cannot push God's clock. That's right. Amen. You can't make God do anything. You can only say it pleases God. Yes. And let God have all the rope he needs. Yes. Because he is God. God. Martha acted as if God was late. God is never late in response to your prayer. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 It doesn't matter. It takes 125,000 years. God is never late in responding to your <coughs> prayer. Amen. There are skeptics. Well, Lord, if you were here, you wouldn't have died to your fault. When I called, you didn't answer me. You didn't show up. They make it sound like Christ was indifferent to the urgency of their cry. Like King Saul said, I forced myself. Samuel didn't show up when I expected him to. Because I expect God to live in the aspect. You never corner God. Right. Don't you try. Because you made him sinning. Because he does things that pleases him. Mm -hmm. Not me. Amen. Praise God. Praise and they give him hope. And when he showed up, they were not prepared to receive him. It says Mary refused to go out to him. She was angry. And Martha carried out the threat. Lord, it is your fault. If he was here, he would have died. But he didn't come when we called him. You could have saved him. You could have spared the situation we're going through right now. And by the way, Jesus, don't worry about it. It's too late. Go back where you were. He stink up. <laughs> now we're, you messed up, Jesus. I said, didn't I tell you? If you can believe, yes. you will see the power of God. Yes. Hello. Ain't he notice? He said, where did he put it? And so we'll put it over there. He said, okay, take it to him. He didn't roll stone for them. They put it there. He said, you roll it. I'll call him, you roll it. 
but they act the teeth did not care. Sometimes in your prayer, you communicate subliminally, God, you're not really listening to me. God, you don't even care for me. I'm giving you my sense of urgency. It's 911 prior to zero, and you're acting like it's prior to five on your scale. What's wrong with you, God? You're not showing up. Look at Gideon. Gideon chided the Lord. He said, Gideon questioned God. What, God, where are the miracles my daddy told me about? It's like you're saying, Pastor Neil made a mistake. He made their promise for God, and it never happened. Mm How -hmm. many folks said that before? Mm -hmm. Some even backside of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some even forced to call me a false prophet. Hello. You know what God told him in the day? How many times? Seven. Seven times. Is that right? If you did five times, nothing will happen. That's right. I wonder if they did follow instructions given to them. Right. Because if you override the instruction God gave you mm -hmm. and do your own thing, then it's, 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 it's mm -hmm. clean. Right. Now, you may, you may think so, but he's clean. You don't follow what he told you to do. You know something completely different. All right? Mm -hmm. So, Gideon, Gideon, we're going to say to the angel, hey, the problem is yours. Where's God in the hell? Where are all the miracles? He was acting as if God was indifferent to the situation. Hello? And he, he blamed God for the problem. And God's trying to tell him, Gideon, if you stay the way you are, no miracle is going to happen. I'm going to give you one more chance to go home and fit and get things right. Burn the idols in your house mm -hmm. and begin to do this. He was so scared to do it, he did by night. Mm -hmm. But when he followed God's instruction, look at the victory he won. Yes. Yes. The thing he thought could not be done was done. Only when he did things right. Daniel prayed for 21 days and God told him, I answered the prayer 21 days ago. That's right, amen. amen. And see that God is on, you know, put you on hold. If you want to speak to Jesus, go to nine. If you want to speak to the Father, go to six. In the trade, right? And if you hold both, go to two. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Mm -hmm. Some folks think that's how God operates. No. Look at Abraham and Sarah. They run out of patience. Well, God, you don't stand. I'm old and cold and indifferent. I know you promised me, God. I know you meant good intention, but you know, God, I, I want to help you out. Let's get the on the picture here. Yeah. Hello. Mm. Somebody have this term called God perfect will and God permissible will. Mm -hmm. Who is not God permissible? It's man's permissible will and God perfect will. God lets you do what you want to do if you want to do your way. Or can do it his way. God told Moses, speak to the rock. What he did? He smote it. But water came, but look what happened to it. He couldn't go to the city. He did the wrong thing. Abraham and Sarah thought God was indifferent. And so, but God didn't need their help. Because Agar was not a help, was a hindrance. And still is today. Alright? So the key is, they that wait upon the Lord. That's the most dirtiest word in Pentecost. Wait on God. No Christian I know like that word. Wait on God. Me? Wait on God? Problem is God on the time this watch. That's the problem with God. <laughs> so much about my Swiss watch. God, you know what time it is now? It's now time for you to show up. <laughs> Where are you? But then it said, wait, I say. I waited patiently. Mm -hmm. Nail biting patience. On the edge. You know, we do some crazy stuff when we run out of patience with God. Mm. You run way ahead of it, and He won't stop you. That's right. You run on if you want to. Or you can follow Him, or you run ahead of Him. But they, the apostles, always sought God. You know that? They sought the Lord. When you kneel to pray, why do you kneel? It's a symbol of humility. When you raise your hands to God, it's a sign of I surrender to God. 
When you prostrate to God, it's a symbol of submission to God. And when you stand up, you feel you got the victory. Amen. Victory. Yes. When Hannah got up off the prayer knees, she got up and she stood up. And she walked out with a promise. Yes. She had no idea if God was fulfilled or not. But she believed. And she conceived because she believed. So, what does the record show? That in reference to prayer, we know God always will supply our needs. Mm -hmm. Yet some folks don't believe that. Now, I didn't say God will supply your greed. I said your need. He knows the difference between my greed and my need. All right? Now, I must confess, there's some dinner and food I've had. I know I'm full, but it tastes so good, I with an extra morsel, and I get sick after that. And how many times we repent, we'll still, re we'll still do it again. We've got short memory. Hello? God said, I make a way of escape. Those are promises. I'll make a way of escape. I'll make situations such that you can bear it. I don't know of any Christian going through a trial and tribulation that can say, hey honey, you can bear it. Mm -hmm. Brother Pastor, take a walk. <laughs> but God said, you can. Yes, that's right. How do you believe God? He said, I will never allow you to go through what you can bear. Amen. That's right, amen. Yet, I don't know how many Christians really believe that. Now you all say amen, that's lip service. I don't know either from the heart to mean it. But we all say that. Mm -hmm. We all feel that God's gone too far. Job was taken to, a, to the limit to seem like. And Job, in that situation, did not lose his faith in God. The apostles in jail <coughs> situation never lost their confidence in God. Have you noticed that? They never lost their faith in God. In every case, God brought them out. To their adversary, it looked like they would be defeated. But a miracle was always associated with their crisis. The force of God. Hallelujah. Jesus. I believe that God promised us your prayer. Amen. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Now yes. you all can say amen, but you know we're walking to hear a different story. But I believe you know what I have need of, what I need it, and how to get it. I believe God's word said his ears are open to our cry. And very few people pray that way. But when I when you pray the promise of God, you displace unbelief. Yes. There's no room for unbelief. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Because if I lead them out on a standing, you know, I'm going to have problems. That's right. You know, the agnostic does not pray because he feels there's no God to listen to his prayer. And he's choked with unbelief. Right? So the agnostic says that, actually, actually, he says, I'm not sure God is listening to me. So he doesn't pray. The atheist, he said, there is no God, so there's no need to pray. I did myself. I did my way. And these guys commit suicide. Because there's no answer. Everybody commits suicide will all tell you there is no God. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are their own gods. They make their own decisions. They kill themselves. But then Christians also got a problem. Professing Christians on the God, what's kept away so late? Why took you so long, God? Mm -hmm. Why don't you hurry up? You know? Mm -hmm. In Revelation, they cry. How long? Mm -hmm. How long? They said, my couch is full of my tears. But the apostles, when they prayed, the building shook. Yes. Most of the time we shake while the building shakes. <laughs> it's amazing. Hello? All right? What kind of response do you expect from God? It depends on how you approach God. Mm -hmm. To me, when I'm going to pray to God, I say, God, please, God, please. Hey, man, this is not panhandling. I'm not going to beg God. I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a heir with God. I got a family name. I belong to a living God. And so I approach him as my father. He said, your father knows you have need of these things and will supply them. Well, the problem is we can pray and communicate to God a sense of I'm limiting. I don't think I can really do this one. It's too tough for God to handle you can pray a limiting prayer and limit God. Mm -hmm. And God say you limit him, that's a sin. But limit God. Or we could pray and blame God. God, it's your fault. My list didn't work for me. 
You can come on there and pray. It'll be okay. Mm -hmm. But God, look at old I am. God, I'm so old now. God, where are you? That's too late. <laughs> Man, she's gone. And some tempt God in their prayer. And some try to push God. And some bring to God uh, uh, their, 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 own, their own opinion, their own plan, and expect God to rubber stamp it. I mean, God doesn't rubber stamp it. He got man, they quit on it. Well, God, you know what I resolve to do. And if you don't stop this stamp that says, give your approval, I'm going to quit on it. A lot of folks have done that. Amen. They want God to stamp what he decided to do. I said, no, I'm God. I'm not a man. <laughs> Hello? All right? So, we have to understand that because God will respond immediately, it does not mean that your prayer request will be dismissed. Now, Paul South went down to Philippi in the will of God. And she got whipped. But there's a guy in jail that I want to reach. Hello? That was a road to, to that man's salvation. And then in that jail, they start singing and praising God. They said, well, God, you gave us a dream and a vision. We, 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 we act on it. Look what we got. We're back. Mm -hmm. Is that what they said? Mm -mm. I think Daniel could have done that too. God, I'm mad. I'm in the lion's den. Mm -hmm. All the boys could say, I'm in the fire furnace. I'm angry at God. I mean, the folks told me that. I'm angry with God. I thought, oh boy. Big D, he had the first one over the last one either. But you won't change his mind one bit. Right. Hello? Because yeah. God's not a man. God has not ignored our request. We have to learn to let God be God. Yes. Hello? Yeah. Anybody who followed Jesus has a cross to follow in their backs. You got your cross? I got my cross. If you threw it off, too bad. You just won't make it. That's all there is to it. But I found out that when I threw my cross off, it did not hit the ground. Somebody else grabbed it. Yes, that's right. Amen. It's like hot potato. Who's it, who's it going to catch it? So, Lord, when I come to pray, how should I pray then? <coughs> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 5, tells you how to approach God in prayer. Now, people don't understand this. I learned something I say that never act outside of my blessing, never get involved in anything beyond my faith. Never. If I don't have faith for this, I'm not involved in it. I just won't. Amen. It's like balancing a budget. When God is finished, there's no leftovers. It was enough to meet the need, and that's it. No success. And yet people go beyond that and hurt themselves. And God as you do it, because you're free with moral agent, right? He had come to God must approach him by faith, must believe that God is, and that God is a rewarder of them that do to seek him. The word does that mean constant in effort to accomplish something. I keep coming back. I keep coming back. I come back with a good spirit, a good attitude. I'm not upset with God. I'm not chatting God, I'm not blaming God. I come worshiping, worshiping, yes, worshiping, amen. worshiping, worshiping. Yeah. I come worshiping, praising, yes. praising, praising, worship. You're not gonna Impress God. God, what's, what's wrong with you? Where are you? You're keep on letting the teeth falls out. That's going to happen. But he inhabits the praise. He lives where the praise is. God pointed out, Job in all his affliction did not charge God foolishly. Amen. God put there for me to learn that. All right? Persistent in doing anything and, and persevering and seeking God in prayer and not giving up. Now, when I just married my wife, I was so much in love with my uh, precious lady, I called her name a lot. She said, stop calling my name. She did tell me that. She did. Stop calling my name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Love making you stupid things. <laughs> now, God doesn't want to come and say it. We have praying. 
Jesus! Jesus! Oh, Jesus! That's good for a choir. That's good for down the road, you know. Protest march. But don't work in the prayer room. Jesus! Hello? Jesus! Yes? Jesus! What do you want? Jesus! I'm here. Jesus! Jesus! <laughs> Two hours away. Jesus! Okay. He was up to my prayer. He didn't pray nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't pray a thing. He was a vain repetition. Chanting. The Syrophoenician was very plain. Lord, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. I want you to come and heal her. Get out of here, lady. Lord, you understand? My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. I don't give us the dogs. Yes, that's true, but I'll get the crumbs if you have to give that to me. But I'm not leaving without an answer. That's prayer. And Jesus, a lot of that take place to teach you and me what he expects of us. No. Oh. Vain repetition, no help God. Or lip service, you know, but from the heart. Is your heart really involved in that prayer? Or hold on down. I thought somebody said to me, I deserve whatever I got from God. I, I earned it. Oh, yes, you did. <laughs> How? What have you done? Well, pastor, I did this and I did that. And, you know, I deserve that, that, that. You know, they're basking today. If you think you deserve God's blessing, you're wrong. That's right. Amen. You don't deserve nothing. Amen. He chose yes. to be merciful. Amen. He chose to answer. He doesn't have to answer nobody's prayer. And nobody can ask him, why didn't you do it? Hello. He kept justifying himself. But God, I'm a good Christian. You know, this girl in the Caribbean. One day, they, they work her so hard until she found the mirror. I look in the mirror and says, Me, me, pretty girl. Can't carry water? No more. <laughs> <laughs> she stopped washing dishes. She was too pretty to wash dishes. Her knees were too nice to get broken down in the sink and washing the plates. Obviously, that kind of girl, you don't want to marry that kind of girl. I eat that McDonald's every day. But some people have gone, they're, they're so self-righteous in their prayer. Well, I'm not like sister so-and-so, therefore God, how come your best time didn't bless me? That's the problem right there. You're too holy for God to help you. You're too righteous for God to help you. You think you're a gift to God. You are not a gift to God. You are a problem to God. Okay. You are a crisis to God. You're, you're, you know, your you're righteous in mind to God is as filthy rags. That's right, amen. You can't earn an answer from God. It's the goodness and the mercies of God. Yes, yes. And the kindness of God. Yes, yes. Why God does things for us. So when you come to pray, next time, all right, praise Him first for what He has done in your life. Like saving you, dying for you. Yes, amen. Get your eye up your set, get your eyes on him. Yes. It's amen. about him, not you. Yes. You're infinitesimal of his quality. Maybe less than zero. You're nobody. It's all about him. When I come to God, you know, but when, when the priest comes for the Lord, he took off his beautiful garment and put on a white garment. That means you got no beauty that he should desire you. You come to God and he said, Lord, I'm not worthy. So I take a prayer to God. Lord, I'm not worthy. He, he was praying in prayer for God to talk to him. I'm not worthy, but if you could just help me. He was so humble. He was so broken, so bent up. And the angel showed up and delivered him. It's humility. But God, why did you answer me? God, why are you doing that? I say, God, where are you? Huh? You know, like, he, he, he doesn't owe you anything. God does not owe you anything. The problem you're in is not his doing, it's yours. Because I didn't cause the problem. I didn't make the problem. Don't act as I'm the one the problem. If you want my help, come humble before me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. 
I'm not glad I've abandoned you somewhere. I'm not, I'm not the cause of your problem, God said. But you need my help. And dear the Lord, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. One guy said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. But if you do come, just say the word. Because my house is not good enough to receive you. And the Lord said, wow. Never seen such faith before in Israel. His approach. Ask God to teach you how to approach him in prayer. The noise you make don't, 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 don't affect God. Or oh, the quietness don't even appeal to him either. Mm -hmm. It's the approach right. and the condition of the heart. Yes. And realize he doesn't owe us nothing. Amen. You folks in that. Yes. He doesn't owe you an answer. That's right. Hello? Amen. And you can't justify yourself to it. But then God's saying, I'm going to give to God. He's a gift to me. That's right. Amen. Amen. He's the gift of God to me. Yes. Hello? Yes. So I can praise in God. So when I go to pray in any service, I pray this way. Thank you, Lord. You're so good to me. You're kind to me. You bless me. I'm not deserving of you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you've done. And remind God as good as Amen. Praise attracts us. Once I pray God recognizes the goodness to me, then I can make my intercession. Then I can make my supplication. Then I can make prayer of communion. Sometimes we don't always go to God with our problems. Because you got a problem, don't mean you have to spend every prayer meeting with that problem. That's right. You're going to waste your time with God. He's going to bless you. You're going to turn back on you. Come to God with praise. Yeah. Yeah. Look. When you come to God with your problem and you have to hear it on Monday, don't come Tuesday talking about it. <laughs> he does not forget the problem. Get involved with the thing that worships him. And while you take care of his situation, he will take care of yours. That's right. Amen. I learned that by experience. By the word of God. Monday comes, same old thing. Tuesday, same old thing. When is it? I said, look, man, get out of here. Holy Zebedee, mom, Zebedee, mom, I believe, was given Jesus Christ, and she wanted her two sons to sit on the right hand and left hand. She was so smart. She came and she worked at Jesus. I mean, she set him up. <laughs> he said, okay, okay, man, what do you want? What do you want? She said, okay, I tell you what, Lord, I want my two sons, when you come to your kingdom, sit on the right hand and left hand. Now, she could come demanding it, but she came worshiping him. She worshiped him. Look at that, friend. Who wants to hear your problem every day? Is that how God is? No. That's why I want, I want to be a doctor, a physician, because the air part of what good door has a problem. That's why they're having a suicide list. They can't handle it. Wouldn't it be nice if one day someone walked in the office and the doctor said, Doctor, guess what? I'm the prime of health. <laughs> Look at my abs. Look at my triceps and biceps. Oh. I feel like Hercules. Woo! Feel it. Let's have a hand rest, the doctor. Come on. Look okay. at that nice. But oh, doctor, I got a pain here. You again? Yes, doctor, stop this up here. You again? Yes, I'm okay. No. My God, who made me? <laughs> what are you made of? Hello? <coughs> I've seen the house made of crackers before. You thank God it never rains. <laughs> Hello? Now, folks, don't be mad at me. I saw this in Edmonton. And I thought to God, I thank God I came to God before I met her. If I did, I would not serve God. She's just skinny, ready, she's skinny. And she got more skinny and skinny and skinny to the skill of the church. But you see, so she prayed. <laughs> I'm not mocking anybody, it's true, it's true, it's true, it does. And I thought, if anybody walked in this church, 
If the girls on LSD, I'll sit there and say, my drug, or should be whipped by somebody. Because I saw women cry when they're being battered by men. Is that Jesus loving you? One time, Sister Cheryl went on a trip on that, and we, she got a nice hotel. I thought, I don't want this price. I said, I don't want this price. My friend, all night, all night, it was bad. Brain closets. But mm -hmm. can't you? <laughs> you can put up with that noise. But church, I know you can't hurt heard us. Oh my God. In every case, to me it was frightening. Now, they are truly crying out to God. But you know, church, remember this here. When Jesus was praying and making groaning, the crowd never heard him. Did they? They never heard him. He was in the garden of Gethsemane. Is that right? And only a few men each share his experience to him. And they couldn't take it. They, they stepped on it. It was too much. And we do cry. We do groan. And we grunt. You will. There's no question about it. We're on the agony and pain, whatever. But somehow, when we come into his house, we tell people, our God is a happy God. Yes. Now, one person saw a billboard, I won't tell you where, they said, we're the happy friend in church. And they wrote back in the paper and then the radio, that's a false advertisement. They were not greeted at the door. They weren't treated right. They said, this is a change the billboard. When you tell someone that Jesus is happy, and they come, or, you know, if a little kid hear you crying, they think they're being whipped. Scared of Jesus. <laughs> my dad was praying for a little one time. My wife was there. And my dad, I thought, Daddy, stop it. The more he put his hand on her, the more she screamed. <laughs> <laughs> so, my God, Daddy quit. <laughs> I'm going to lock you up. <laughs> Just carry <laughs> on. <laughs> That's the first time in the church you see that. What do you think? Be honest, Paul. What do you think? <laughs> the cuckoo. They're mad. I would think that because I'm ignorant, maybe. Now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's church. Now, but don't forget. They are chanting religion. What they chant? I see the Jews does it. My God, they don't have back cake after this. <laughs> <laughs> By the wedding wall, I want to wait when they butt the wall. <laughs> no, I'm not mocking, but where did it came from? <laughs> Folks, when we're talking to God, Read the Psalms. Now, if you're going to talk to me, go to God and talk to me like a friend. Talk to God like a friend. Yes. I don't care how pain you are. Go to your doctor. You don't scream at him. Do you scream at your doctor? So why do you scream at Jesus? Come on, folks. When you shout, you shout for the gospel of triumph. Yes, that's right. Yes. It's happiness. It's joy. Amen. And people understand that. Hello? Mm -hmm. But when they see anything else, they think it's crazy. Most of the apostles, they attract attention, but with a positive <coughs> attention. Church, I'm trying to tell you, 
Your spirit is, is under your control. You never lose control of prayer. Never does. And the pain is, is hard on us. And I can't tell you how to, how to behave. I want to tell you this. How it look. What on earth is God doing to this person? Ah! Okay, friend. You will not be in church and God rip your clothes off you. He will not do it. And if you have a spirit cheering, he won't rip your clothes off you and strip you naked. There's no way. That's right. Amen. Hello. Amen. And you know, and I'm going to say this to you now. If you're in the spirit and you do drop in the spirit and it can happen, you will not hit you and not right and get killed. That's right. God can put you down safe for that. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I know that. We had a tree across the road. The city would let us take it down, and the wind blew it right down. Mm -hmm. And it, it missed the church. Mm -hmm. And went right to the ground. Yeah. Yep. Folks, now you see, I know one guy, he came to church. He got moved to church. He moved, moved back and forth. He talked, when he came to church, he never saw him. He should talk to him. And then sometimes he's just hyper, he run and put a hole in the wall and all that stuff. I mean, he got these excursions. But he's gone, he's gone from the Lord. But he's got to push God all the time. You can't push God. You can't let God give the hose to anybody. You can't let God heal somebody. God may never heal us. That's right. You should worship him. That's right. Amen. You're feeling pain. You should worship him. Yes, amen. You're hurting! Just the pain. Hallelujah! Come on, let's worship God. Come on, let's worship God. Come on. We feel the sorrow of the pain. But that woman, she, she left church. She left church. And you know what? The thing she was praying for, I see, didn't come her way. It didn't come her way. But that's how she prayed. They got those who pray in tongues, just pray in tongues the whole time and never talk to them this one time. Mm -hmm. And Paul told them they're not wise. Paul said, You pray with your understanding yes. and you pray in the Spirit. Yes. When I pray in the Spirit, when you do, because you don't know and you're not praying the right prayer. At that moment, and God said, I'm going to kick in there for you. I'm going to help you and pray through you. Mm. And you will have a clue what he's saying. Right. He might be talking about you. <laughs> yeah. And quite likely is. <clears throat> What's in your good interest? And maybe if you knew what God was saying in the tongue, he said, Why did I say that? Yes, God said that. So we pray in, in, in understanding and we pray in the Spirit. Worship the Lord. Vader petition, lips only, not from the heart, holding them down, justify self. And by the way, I don't mock nobody's prayer. No way. If you do that, you offend God. But God said prayer must be taught. The Sabbath said, teach us how to pray acceptable prayer. He told him, lifting up holy hands, come making words. Right? He can't make you talk in tongues if you open your mouth. Hello? He won't make you. He won't make you. You have to heal yourself to him. Right? The next thing God wants to do is witnessing. And carry on here. Witnessing. Andrew won Nathaniel by diplomacy. The apostles were always witnessing the people. It's our duty to witness to people. And by the way, when they come and see us worshiping, I hope it attracts them to God and not repels them. You better not frighten them. You better make sure you and I control the spirit. Yes. Because the spirit is controlled by us. We are in control of our spirit. We're in control of how we worship God. And they're looking at us. Amen. And, and our worship should be magnetism, not driving or repelling or pulling. All right? The couple 
Aquila and, 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 uh, and uh, Priscilla, they had diplomacy among Apollos. I can sure when a church member or a church doesn't win anybody for Christ or can't invite them to go. Something is wrong with us. Paul approached the Ephesians with wisdom. All these are our role models to follow. Well, I've been going to church 15 years. Who do you want to forget? Nobody. You talk about studying? Nobody. You want to go to church? Nobody. Friend, you're going to be lost. As a prophet to God. Because something is wrong. Because he shall receive power to be witnesses unto me. So you're bearing that power. Peter went to Cornelius' house and won to God. Mm -hmm. So the apostles were involved. Now, we don't win people because we don't have sometimes a burden for them. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> folks, you cannot save people faster than God will save them. That's right. And sometimes all God wants you to do is just be a friend. That's right. And live out your life before them. Mm -hmm. Everybody you meet is not ready for Acts 2.38. That's right. That's right. Don't ram it on them. Don't beat them in the house with it. Don't curse their past. Hello. Paul at Tyra Tyra. Peter at Cornelius house. And Paul at Mars Hill. In every case, they respect their past. But so forth clearly their future. Hello. You know, don't look for a fight. Look how you can win that birth to Christ. Now, Philip went to Samaria. He did not go there to attack Simon the Sorcerer. Is that right? No, we're, we're not here to, to curse the world. They're already cursed already. They're condemned already. What well, we're here to bring light to them. Is that right? Bring light to them. And so, Philip went to Samaria, and Samaria responded. I believe Philip went with a burden. Now, Philip is not even a pastor, an apostle, a deacon, or evangelist, nothing like that. Just, I mean, a deacon, but nothing else. He served tables. And look what he did in church. He impacted them. Paul, preaching, and is preaching and teaching inside faith. You can turn people away. Why on earth are you going to strip people before you catch them? Of the church, sinners cannot conform to the epistles without first experiencing Acts. Right. Go back. Right. Amen. Amen. We cannot. And if all we do <coughs> is try to fix the wall roll for them and their hair dues, it's not going to work. They first have to meet the master. And the change is not just to conform to us. Was conform to Him. Right. Right. We gotta reproduce Christ in them. Right. How? Point them to Jesus. Right. Hello. We're not better than anybody, but we learn to conform to Him, and we stand out before we conform to Jesus. Paul and the Philippian jailer, you know, he stopped the guy from suicide. He did. But how did Paul do it? Do thyself no harm. What must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe on Jesus. And the first thing it says, believe on who? Jesus. Jesus. So the emphasis on Jesus. So we got to point people to Jesus. Now we thank God for our standards and our holiness and all that stuff. But church, if we're going to reach people, they better love Jesus first. That's right. Hello. Yes, amen. Lydia. All right? Don't be offensive. Don't be insensitive. Don't be a novice with the Word of God. Amen. The plate of dinner has got to be attractive. Mm -hmm. You know, there are two restaurants I know of in St. Albert. And one just slap it down, and one just real, real, real nice and good. <coughs> it must pass the eye test, then the smell test, then the water <laughs> test. Oh, well, you don't want it. Is that right? Yeah, right. You don't pass those tests. Right? Can't be holding them down 
and God and me who are holy. You can't win people through racism. It doesn't work. Is that right? Don't get eager beaver. Hello? Don't get involved in their sins. Yes, amen. Say amen? amen. You can't save people by involving their sin. All right? Our job is to attract people to God with compassion that heals. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our job is to relax them to realize God's not your enemy, he's your friend. Yes, amen. You can trust him. So our presentation must be uh, inviting to people. We influence people by our positive approach to our walk with God. Now, if you walk around like you're being beaten up by the devil, and, oh, the devil's after me today, you ain't going to win me, man. I want to know your God. When I see you, and I, you look like you're being whipped by the devil every day, I don't want your God. You're not as weak. I want to follow somebody whose God is strong, yes. powerful, Amen. and delivered. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's worship God. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. All right? The way you communicate. I see Jesus attract people by meeting their needs. Philip and Andrew relax people. We influence people. Hello? Now, I don't mean church Sunday morning would come here because some of the visitors in Sunday morning, we won't dance in the spirit. My God, I'll still dance. Yes. I'm not asking for them. Okay. I would have always done. I ain't going to change for them. No way. But neither will I act unseemingly. Right? Yeah. I'm going to be sensitive. Not condemning. And people don't come back sometimes because we are insensitive to them. The apostles reach people by meeting their physiological and their sociological needs. If they're next by spirit, we can pray for them. Don't call me. Well, Pastor, so and so sick. Let's pray for them. No, you pray for them. Pastor, you come and teach them. No, you teach them. Why God give you the Holy Ghost? All right? One more thing to look at here is standing up with each other. If you don't love each other, how can you love a visitor? They have all things in common, right? So God wants you to do the same. One more thing, we're going to finish here tonight. Tell the person I believe he's going to finish. Tell them, I, tell them I, I believe he's going to finish. <coughs> Come on, say, I believe he's going to finish. I can see those highs looking at me. Oh, Pastor Neil. Oh, could you please quit? Yeah. While the goal is good, the, I'm still going good so far, right? Amen. Happy to Jesus. church, something attracted me to Jesus. Something did. But what if someone did not give to the cause? The church would have not been there for me to be saved. Now, I welcome Sunday morning crowd. I do. But I know that's not necessarily the church. Those are, those are well-wishers. <laughs> They're my well-wishers. Hello? But the real church are committed people. You know how I know you're committed? When you give. The widow, in her contribution, gave a mite. And she was intimidated by what she had. And Jesus did not condemn her for what she gave. He commended her for the spirit in which she gave it. She gave the least in value, but the most in commitment. And God said, yes, it means a lot to him. You see, in, in the days of the prophet, I mean, the, the priest, Ezra and Nehemiah, they had to work through much rubbish. The temple was deserted. Discouragement hit everybody. Everybody turned around right to Malachi chapter, I mean, Agai chapter 1. Go there, please. Please go there. Agai chapter 1. Praise God. What do you notice there? This guy's to the page. What do you notice? I got to the close. Sorry. What do you notice when you look there, folks? The people said, it's not time to what? To build the house of the Lord. If you don't give, then you don't love the church. You don't love the church. 
you don't love the church. Contribution. Now, I was taught by the pastor that only those who gave are committed. The rest of us what? Consumers. Spectators. But what really got this church going is the contribution of people from their heart. God said, take it from them if they give willingly. Giving involves motivational, inspirational, and enthusiastic giving. I mean willing. Collaborative will giving. Cooperative giving. Now, write these down in your mind. Here's some types of giving that I saw in the book of Acts. People gave motivationally, by inspiration, by cooperation, by thanksgiving, by sacrificial giving. They gave from loyalty to the cause. They remember how God blessed them and encouraged them, and so they gave encouragement giving. They were always meeting needs. You see, God motivated us in different ways how to bless his work. And the apostles were always involved. In Acts 20, Paul says, I taught you how to give. Now, all the churches in the book of Acts didn't give, but some gave. Some people cannot be persuaded to give. And some is beyond being persuaded, and some is always giving. And giving influenced God. Giving encouraged God to answer your prayer even speedily. Cornelius was blessed because he was a giver. All saints are not equal. Trust me. Believe me. To God, they're not all equal. God, to those who honor me, I will honor them. You know, when you drive by this church, and the church is in need, and it looked decrepit and looked wasted. And you look at your house where you live, and it's better than the <coughs> church. Doesn't that bother you? Should it bother David? David said, How can I live in this beautiful home? And God's house is like this. He said, I can't do that. And David said, I want to build it, but God wouldn't let me. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to help those who got allowed to build. I'm going to provide the material and the funds to do it. And he did it. You know what God said? David, you are a man after my own heart. He became a friend of God by his desire to give. Amen. Now, giving generously will filter down your spine to your children. Yes, amen. And your children, children. Yes. And yes. your children, children. Yes, amen. Even when you're in your grave and you're rocked and forgotten, your kids are still riding on the blessing that right. you sow. Yes, amen. 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 When you feel a burden for the city, it will make you want to contribute. You do it out of not because you have to, but you do it out of commitment. Amen. You, you're a liberal giver. And so God, church, was always given. Now, before I close, here's a couple comes up. And they decided to lie to the church. They didn't have to. You no, know they did. They kept that part of the price. Now, why do people do this? I don't understand why they do this. You know, we got a tie down the ball out there. It says a different category of giving. And one part says giving. One part says tithe. And they put, take off tithe, and get five dollars. If it is five dollars, then it's real. But if it's not, it's a lie. It's a mockery of God. It's a lie. You can't do an income tax. They lock you up. That's right. You're mocking God. You should be honest. Because no one's gonna ask you either way what why you give why you don't give. That's your prerogative. But you didn't write. Hello. And so this couple got killed in the book of Acts because they acted improperly in their giving. Now, either we are consumers or contributors to the cause. Some were consumers and some were contributors. Some followed Jesus only for the loaves and the fishes. 
and some were with him in good time and bad time. And I don't know what understand. I don't know why it happened this way. With a crowd of three or five thousand, and nobody saved their lunch to share with anybody but a little boy. I thought the hero was that little boy. Everybody ate up all their lunch, share with nobody, and this mother who cooked that meal for a little boy gave it to him. And when everybody ate up all their meals in the desert place and they're hungry, starving to death, after they finished eating, and the Lord needs something to give to the crowd, nobody had it, not even the apostles. And the little boy put his hand up and said, Excuse me, please. Yes, son, what do you want? I got something to give Jesus. And he handed Jesus all of his blood. Oh, God. That's why I believe kids are the future. Adults never do that. He was more than a spectator. He was a participant. Some people, amen, they're good stewards of God's blessings, and some they just are not. Amen. I learned by, by experience, when I was on the job and God raised my pay, He didn't give it to me to raise my standard of living. He gave me the ability to give more to the cause. Amen. And if we be willing and generous, then we have command and control of the heavens. The guy was dying and they asked him, they said, man, where's your God? He said, look in my jacket pocket on the right, you'll see my God is bound with this God. Here's why you should be thankful and give to God. You really should. Number one, he satisfied your salary benefits on the job. You have a good salary because God helped you. You're working in good working condition because God helped you. You have a job security because God set you up. You've been promoted to a position you shouldn't have, but you got it. You got job satisfaction. God made it possible for you. God meet your physiological needs all the time. You're not, you don't like anything. God meet your safety needs and your house needs. God met your social needs. Your esteem needs, your love by people that really should hate you, but they love you still regardless. And your dreams and your desire have been actualized, but you don't deserve it. God does it anyhow. When the bills are due, God showed up and helped you out. God kept you healthy, your soul is prospering, and supplies all of your need. And all he asks is to come back and give him thanks. And that is a problem. And when they gave, and it's inspired, gave back to God, it's not what they gave to God that bothered God, it's what they kept back from God. I'm talking about being apostolic. Can you imagine them? God didn't ask you to give that others might be eased. God didn't ask you to give from your abundance. He said, give from your needs. That's true giving. David said it must cost you something to give. It must be liberal and generous, ungrudgingly. You can't carry it with you. You can't take it with you. I know for a fact that I'm blessed because my parents were one of those that opened up their house to people all the time. In England, wherever they've been, they've all been known for that. The church started in their home. They were giving, giving, giving. So all eight of us are blessed. Not because we did anything, because what they did. Isaac, Jacob, and Ezra was blessed because of the steps of Abraham. Hallelujah. The blessing of Abraham trickle down to the tribe of Levi. Praise God. Are we truly apostolic in our praying, in our witnessing, in our giving? 
I want to be an apostolic. I want to pray. Powerful prayer. That means something. I want God to teach me how to pray. Now, if you think I don't grunt when I pray, you're wrong. Ugh! Did I do that? Definitely. Everybody knows that. Ah! Ugh! We're being racked your body. But if you think I'm going to give the devil one show, never in your life. He's not going to see it. I'll only show it to him. Amen. I recall when we were in our conference two weeks ago or sometime back, only my wife knew I never sleep one night. That one night. I sat at that table, everybody's eating, and I couldn't eat, and I'm hurting. I'm eating. I said, honey, I'm going through the hell. Let me confess to you. He got so bad one time, I said, honey, I'll see you later. I'm going to the hospital. I'm going to find out what's wrong. Yeah? She could not believe it. It was about 5 in the morning. Couldn't sleep. Just tore me apart. From there to back here, just continuously. When I was with them, I didn't go, ah, ah, no way. God in control. Mm -hmm. In control. Worship. Hallelujah. And I worship him. I want to tell you, they didn't help me one bit. They didn't have nothing to help me at all. In fact, they sit on the way I went. <laughs> I told them to <coughs> But you know what happened? I still say, God, I love you. Woo! God, I love you. I praise you. They say, I fall asleep when I feel all that. And in sleep, I feel nothing. He just, just usher you off into sleep. He starts sleeping. And I said to God, God, you just gave me a reason why I don't want to be lost. Because this, this has to stop. But if I was in hell, it would never stop. It would be over and over. And I tell you, I felt hell. I felt hell all over my body. It was unbearable. I mean, literally unbearable. And God did a step in there. And I, did I pray? Sure, I did. God stepped in there and healed. Did my wife pray for me? Sure, she did. Still, nothing happened. I, I was determined. God, you're great. God, you're still a healer. God, I'll still preach and teach healing. I will teach you the day I die that you're a healer. And it just eventually disappeared. Because God is in charge. This body belongs to Jesus. Yes. I saw a picture of a young lad. It's a noun. He has no legs. Mm -hmm. All he has, folks, is right here. And he walks with hands like that. And then I was moved. I thought, oh my God. And I take for granted my legs. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. When I see those things, I'm reminded how blessed I am. Even if God never worked another miracle for me, just the miracle of being born normal in itself is a miracle. Anything could have happened. Shot up, no hope. Can somebody pray the Lord with me? There's homeless people. They tell me they live in cardboard houses. They said the best home they got is a cardboard house. So I was telling you that it says, I've preached to them for years. He says, there are poorest people in Latin American country. He said, they come to church. He said, they're the most sweetest people they are, but they're very poor. When the rain fall, the cardboard wood just collapses on them. But they come to church and they all give thanks. Hallelujah. Give thanks. Hallelujah. We don't know what problem is. Right. The apostolics. Know what it is to worship God. Oh, Let's try and worship God right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord's church. This should not discourage you. This is the Lord. Thank you for direction. You give a direction how to be an apostolic, how to come to worship you, how to walk with you, how to live with you, how to glorify God. Lift up those hands and cry out to God. And there's no reason why we can't cry out to Him. It's an oh, I'm proud of you, my Savior. Shadala Maha. But oh God, try my spirit and see if you're guiding my spirit. Tonight, Jesus, 
Tonight, Jesus, take us back to Calvary. Sometimes we forget Calvary, the place where the whips were on your back, on your back, the crown of thorns that you wore on your brow, the nails in your hands, the wounds inside. We forget all that, Jesus. And all we know is us, us ourselves. And God, you said, many the reflection of the righteous, but also it promises deliverance. He said, Lord, you're going to hear us. Let your eyes run to and fro upon the earth. Show sure yourself strong on our behalf. God, I want to be one that pray like Elias. Lord Jesus, I want to be witnessing just like Andrew did. I want to give like that widow. Become a true apostolic. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.